Hi there, I'm Sean Vindley and this is Meet the Ministers. My guest on the program this evening is the Shadow Minister for Energy and Water Utilities, the member for Budrum, Steve Dixon. Steve, welcome. G'day Sean, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Why did you choose politics? I mean, there's so many different aspects of your life that I'd like to speak about, but, but why politics? You've got a, a pretty considerable family history of being involved in, in local politics. I do, I do. I, um, well, I've been in private enterprise most of my life and I got to that point where I, I've done extremely well for ourselves. I don't have a credit card, I own everything I've got and we're doing all right. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to put something back in and I didn't like what politicians were doing to people in business. And uh, that's why I got involved. It's, uh, it's one of those things. I, I enjoy serving people, I enjoy looking after people and uh, I realise that's where the real action is in our community. I've spoken to a number of ministers over the last couple of months who've, who've done considerably well for themselves over the years who told me that same thing, that they've found the political situation to have, well, I hesitate to say deteriorated, but to have got to such a situation where they felt they really were duty bound to involve themselves and bring their, their experience to play to try and make the, improve the situation. I would place myself more as an accidental politician because I, there was no way in my business career that I was ever going to get involved in politics. I, I'm an introvert. Yeah. That's hard to believe because I'm here on TV talking to you. But the reality is I didn't like speaking publicly. I just like to get on with the job. I'm probably the bloke that likes to do things behind the scenes. And I still do that quite a bit today. But uh, I speak publicly. I do what I've got to do to be a politician. And I turn up in Parliament House and you've got to do a lot of public things there. But it's an interesting world that we live in. And But that's where the rules and regulations are made that mm. govern our, our state and our country. And I think it's a very, very important position and I think it's where a whole lot of people can do a whole lot of good. Do you find it rewarding personally? Do you enjoy the, the political process? I've enjoyed it up to this date. I, uh, I think if we work extremely hard and we get the opportunity to be running the Queensland Government, I think that would be a whole lot more enjoyable because being with the opposition is not a whole lot of fun. We're underfunded. Uh, we don't make the decisions at the end of the day. Whoever's in government does and uh, that's what I call being responsible. Much like, I guess, continually, continually applying for jobs and being in that sort of audition or application process without actually getting to sit behind the desk. Well, as I said a moment ago, you know, I, I like to do things behind the scenes, but at the same time, unless you're in control, you're not responsible. And when you are in control, you are totally responsible. And that's for the good things and also the bad things. You think and the, I, I like that. You think the LNP can get up in this coming election, it's looking very close. In fact, getting closer the closer we get. I don't get very excited very easily, yeah. but I would. what I do get excited about is people like Campbell Newman. I, uh, I had a lot to do with Campbell coming on board and uh, let's just say we had a conversation 12 months ago and uh, men don't normally make me cry unless they've given me one right between the eyes. Mm. And mate, when he said that he was interested in running for Premier of Queensland, I, mate, I shed a tear, I'll be brutally honest. And it excited me because he's a man that uh, has great calibre and I don't follow too many people. I think he'll do a whole lot of good for the people of Queensland if we are lucky enough to get elected. It's been a hard time for, for Conservative politics in Queensland for a long time now and to have Campbell step forward and to appear as that shining light, finally somebody who can actually unite the party and lead them forward, as you say, pretty exciting. Well, it, it excites me now. I, I get that shivers down my spine. You know the thing when you see the Australian flag or that thing special happens in your life? I got it right now when I'm talking about Campbell Newman. He, he still does that to me. I owe the man nothing except him giving us the opportunity where he could possibly be the Premier of Queensland, that really, really excites me because he's a yes-no person. You know, you ask him a question and you're going to get a yes-no answer and that's yeah. what I respect. Yeah, OK. Tell me about growing up. As I said earlier, you've got a, a considerable family history in politics, a, a lot of local councillors in your family. You grew up um, central Queensland or Rockhampton. What was that like? Well, it's pretty unusual. I, uh, mate, I knew my family. That was all that was really around me because we were on a, on a property in the middle of nowhere, a place called Jalobra. There was probably a population in that area of you know, 15, 20 people on, mm -hmm. a, on a really good day if there was people driving past or the train <laughs> went through, there was a few more. But, uh, you know, I got to see a lot of cows and you know, a lot of pumpkins grown and we, we had a beef cattle property, dairy and small crops. And in 1968, my folks got forced off the land and we moved down to Brisbane. It, um, it was a very, very good life. I, uh, I look back at it and uh, I miss those days, but Life moves on. Was it a difficult transition for your family in general to, to make that decision to step off the land and, and draw to a close that, that part of your family's history? Absolutely, it will never leave my body. Yeah. You know, to be forced off the land because of lack of water, it, it's, it's a terrible thing to see happen, that to happen to anybody. And it happened to my family. And uh, mum and dad moved to Brisbane and my grandfather always had a saying, he said, it's not a bad wind that doesn't blow somebody some good. And uh, 
what happened was they moved to Brisbane and they made a fortune out of caravan parks. Uh, you know, that's, that's not a bad thing. Mm. You know, and I, I use that word, I, I suppose, a, a bit high in numbers of fortune. They made a good living and we, we, we grew up well. We didn't need for anything. What, what do you remember about that actual process? I'm interested in talking about it. I mean, how old were you? In what, 69, so you would have been... I was six. Six, yeah. I was yeah. six years do, old. Do you, do you remember... Absolutely. ...the actual process of what was told to you about this decision to move and what the reason was? Very much so. It, uh, we just got to that point. I mean, it, it was a big, big move. You know, and, we, and I'm guessing we, you would have been obvious of the fact that, yes, we are struggling for water, we need to conserve water. And well, well I'll, I'll go to the extreme. We all used to bath in the same bathtub. Yeah. You know, there was a bit of water in the bathtub, and I remember it extremely well when I was... Uh, I was a younger, so I got to go first which was pretty good sometimes. And mum had left a razor on the side of the bathtub and they were the old cutthroat type razor yeah. and it fell into the bath and sliced a hole in my leg. Oh, so, the, so the bath filled up with blood. Nobody else got a bath. <laughs> and they had to take me to Mount Morgan Hospital to get it stitched up. But that's how rare and scarce water was. And people, you know, today, you know, being uh, the Shadow Minister for Energy and Water, I take that really, really uh, importantly to me because I want to make sure that all the people of Queensland have got plenty of water at all the time. And that be that in southwest Queensland and be that all over Queensland. Was it an easy transition coming to Brisbane for your family? Did they settle in pretty quickly? I mean, you already mentioned that family's done very well in caravan parks, which is an interesting industry that we'll, we'll talk about, but was it an easy transition? No, no, it, it was different. I, I was a barefooted young boy, yeah. you know, and I came to Brisbane and I had to wear shoes for a start. The only time I ever wore shoes was when I went to church on a Sunday yeah. and I uh, only had the one pair. But it, it was interesting. It was just different, you know. I, I was a bit of a loner at school because I just didn't know all the other kids for a start and I, I made mates pretty quickly. Brisbane was a big town to me, you know, because we just hadn't seen that many people. But the, it, the transition has been good for me because I've brought the country with me to the city, so I, I've got a bit of both worlds. I, I greatly respect the country because, the, believe it or not, they're the backbone of our country today. You know, they, they create our food, you know, they create all the necessary items that we need to survive. Yet in the city, you know, we're here and we're consumers. You know, you need water, you need meat, you need fruit and vegetables, you know, building materials for your property. You know, most of the stuff comes from the country. You know, our gas, our energy. You know, we, we are very reliant upon our country cousins and we need to look after them, vice versa, they look after us. Mm, very much so. You're watching Meet the Ministers. My, my guest on the program this evening is Steve Dixon, the member for Budrum. We'll be back after the break.